Hello community! What open source technology can you use today? Of course, we are in the area of generative AI and we look at vision technology that we can combine with our LLMs. Now, in my last video, I showed you the technology that we can or we have available by Meta. And I told you about Donut and about here the latest software development, which Meta calls Nougat. And today we look at a competitor or maybe an alliance partner of Meta, Microsoft. What is the current state of technology that Microsoft published in the research paper that maybe we can open source and we can use, even we are a research entity. So if you are a commercial entity, please notice that some different licenses may apply to the commercial case. And the latest model that Microsoft published three days ago is Cosmos 2.5 at the time of recording this video. So let's have a look if we can use the code, if we can have some benefit, if we look at the technology. And you know the internet is a beautiful source. I love the internet. And whenever I see here a video about Cosmos 2, Microsoft new AI breakthrough, generating text, images, video, sound. It's a flying carpet and it's working in real time. You know, this is a fantastic video and you are sure that I will watch this video right after I checked out this video, how to find your love. If you pay $5,000 per month, you sign up for 24 months with your new Tinder Pro Max 15 XL Super and you know what I mean. So coming from the world of the internet now to the world of science. In science, we are absolutely precise. So here we have an hugging face now from Microsoft three days ago, published on September 20, 2023 here, their latest multimodal AI system, Cosmos 2.5. Can we use it? Can we integrate it in our models, in our local machine? How good is Cosmos 2.5? Or should we stick with Meta or maybe Google? Let's have a look. By the way, 22 people upvoted this particular paper. Now, you know that we are now in science. So whenever there is a scientific publication, but please note this is an archive preprint, not a peer-reviewed publication. And Microsoft states here that regarding the Cosmos 2.5 performance for the text recognition task, their Cosmos outperforms Google. And you might say, okay, Google is currently accelerating their AI research. So maybe currently Microsoft outperforms Google. And then Microsoft says for the image to markdown task, and I will show you what this is. It is worth noting that British, yes, our method significantly outperforms Nougat. Now, you know, this is a funny coincidence because I did just a video about Nougat. So I know that in the encoder part, they use a vision transformer and they used here, here the Swin transformer, which I regard here as an appropriate tool currently to use for the encoding. And maybe you could argue that in Nougat here, Meta used here the multilingual part model and you could optimize here the decoder part here. But I think Nougat is, it's okay. It uses parts off the shelf. So if now here it is stated that Cosmos by Microsoft significantly outperforms this, I get interested, what is the technology? Maybe I can use this technology for my projects. And then of course, Microsoft, humble as it is, says this paves the way for the future scaling of multimodal LLMs. Let's have a look here at how to code here. So we are in hugging phase Cosmos 2. We are patch 14.224. The day is September 24, 2023. And here we go. Cosmos 2 grounding multimodal LLMs to the world. So, and this is here, contains the Hugging Face Transformer implementation of the Cosmos 2 model for Microsoft. So how do we code this? It is so easy. At first, you can just go and copy this, done. Or if you look at it, look, we have always the same structure. We have a model. Our model is here 
four vision to sequence. And we have a pre-trained model that we download from Hugging Face. And this model here is called Cosmos 2 patch 14. So please go download the latest version, check what your version is on the day you watch this video. And then we have an auto processor from exactly the same model. Now the prompt is, we want to have a description of the image. So we say an image of something. Great. So great. Now you download here your specific file, your image file. And then here we go. And it is always the same input. We define here the text, the image. You have here your turn tensor. And then we say model.generate. And remember the model here is our auto model for vision to sequence Cosmos 2. You have your input parameter. This is great. Then you generate the text here. Done. Then you have here an output. And the output here of the process text is an image of a snowman warming himself by a fire. Now, isn't this beautiful? Now, if you want to draw now those boxes that we have seen in the demonstration, easy. Here's the code for you. Draw the bounding boxes of the entities on an image. So we do an image segmentation and we check what identifiable objects do we have in our image. Here we have a simple function, draw entity boxes on the image. It is done for you. You just download. Great. Everything ready. And then just say, draw entity boxes on image. You upload the image, the entity, and here you have the result. Great. So if you want here this code implementation here on Hugging Face on the Transformer, you go to Cosmos 2, patch 14, 2024. If, on the other hand, you want here the original implementation by Microsoft, you go to Uni Language Model, then you scroll down here to Cosmos 2, and here you have all the data. Cosmos 2 Grounding Multimodal Large Language Model. And then you have the checkpoint and the demo, and you have the data set. And I will show you the data set in a second. So here you see where you find the code. Try it out yourself. And of course, we're here researching. We have a scientific literature. July 13, 2023, Cosmos 2 is published by Microsoft Research. Now, you might notice that this is here interesting because they are talking here about here some text image model. And yeah, never mind. You know that everything starts with your training data. It is not the model. It is not the architecture of the model. It is not the layer of your models. The only the most important thing is your training data. If you know the training data you can use, you build your model, you build the architecture of your model, and given the amount of money you have, you put in a specific amount of layers and you let it run for a specific amount of time, but you always start with the training data. So let's do this here for Cosmos 2. They have here a very specific data set that's available on Hugging Face called Grid. What is the element? You have an image somewhere on the internet, a GPAC file, and you have a caption, a meta information, what is the content of the image. For example, for this image of Laura, the Caption we have here, Laura poses for a formal headshot in front of a gray background wearing a black shirt. You say, unbelievable, I know this, I know this. So you have about six to seven gigabytes, you have 20 million rows. So this is something nice, you have a training data set. So let me show you how this looks like. An example here of grid is here. So you have an image. And you want to identify the content of the image. So you have a background, then you have here a box, and this box tells you, hey, in this specific region of the image, in this part of the image, this is the text that I identified with this image. I have identified here a young girl, I've identified here something else. You see exactly how it works. It 
has more or less an object segmentation. It draws a box around it, and that's it. And the meta information, the textual information, is the input to the LLM. And given whatever here the meta information to this specific part of an image, of an image segmentation is, the LLM creates a story. Beautiful. Now, I showed you here, you have here Microsoft Uni Language Model Cosmos 2. So here we have now a practical example. I uploaded this image and look, this is what Cosmos 2 gives me as a description of the image. A large robot driving a car. The robot is red and blue and has a large antenna. Not really. Second image. Let's have a look. This is from my LoRa video. The description is a diagram shows a series of yellow, blue and red lines, each representing a different type of laser and a series of points of lights corresponding. No, not really. Next picture. City Street. Yeah, a newspaper headline. Scan eye news with chat. GAP. No. What about some code? Yeah. Create a managed database instance. Azure database for Postgres. Okay, some little tiny bit of text has been identified. Now, last time, look, this is a very easy piece of code with some headline instruction fine tuning data set. As you can see, yes, it is able to find out now that at least a headline, and we get an image of a yellow paper with text. If you're interested a little bit more here in the specific parameters, how we do this, it is easy. You have a text span and it's associated bounding boxes. So you have an image text pair. This is it, full stop. Now, for the bounding box, it is easy. You have a top left corner point, x1 and, X and y1, and a bottom right corner point. So you know exactly of your box, top left and bottom right. So here, location one, location two, and you have box and end of box. Amazing. If you add now the text to this box, you just put here specific token. They have your, your text span, image of a woman, and you have the box. This is all there is to it. So whatever this particular Cosmos 2 system from Microsoft sees, it will put it in a box. It will try to draw a box about the most significant parts of an image. And the box, we learned, has a meta information, has some text to it. And out here of the meta information of the text of every box in the image, our LLM will create a story. As I've shown you here in the demonstration here of Cosmos 2, that if this is my input image here, you see here, this is what Cosmos 2 analyzed. And this is here then the description of the image in detail. As you can see, Cosmos 2 is good in identifying objects. Look, it successfully identified one, two, three, four, five object here. It missed out on the rest of the object, but at least it did somehow identify at least some of the objects. Then we have a person, and then we have here a chalkboard. Now, you see exactly again where it failed. It failed to identify the written information in an image, the text in an image. Let's have another look. If I really make the text short and really clear, like Stable Diffusion XL. I mean, this takes in almost a quarter of the image. And then Cosmos 2 is able to identify this as a text. Great. As you can see, image description, the word SDXL is superimposed over it, which is fantastic. But given the data set that Cosmos has been trained on, this algorithm identifies here this image as a city and numerous buildings in this city and people in the city. And some of them are walking around in the city and others are standing in the middle of the city. 
Now, if you look at this image, there's not one person. And believe me, I created this synthetic image here with stable diffusion, and there was nothing of any person here in this image. And you might say, where does the idea of an image of a person comes from? Here, if you look here at this coffee machine, you see this has been identified as people and the rest has been identified as a city. So here, the cross-section of a flat or of an office has become a city. So you see on the positive side, Cosmos 2 identified the text in the image. It's really noticeable. On the other side, it failed to identify the content of the image. And if we go now here, let's say we have here a screenshot from GPT-4, and I would like here simply that the text in this image is recognized. The result I get with Cosmos 2, with grounding multimodal large language models to the world, beautiful, I get this is a screenshot of a document with a dark background and a light purple header. And no information about the content, no information what is here written down in the sentences. So now you see exactly why Cosmos 2 was evolved to Cosmos 2.5. Because guess what is the new feature in Cosmos 2.5? You will finally be able to read the sentence in the image. You are able to extract the text from the image where, as you can see here, Cosmos 2.0 fails. Congratulations, this is it. So now we know what Microsoft was thinking about. If you have an AI system by Microsoft that will ever think in the box, you know, thinking in a box, you think here inside the box and you say, listen, if I have somewhere a text in the image, you know what I do? I put a box around it. Yes, unbelievable. And you know, if I have a second sentence, now, now hold on to your chair because you're not gonna believe this. We put also a box about the second sentence. And now you know exactly what happens if we have a PDF here on the left side and we use now here the latest Cosmos 2.5 from Microsoft, the latest vision technology three days ago, you know now that each separate line will be, will get a box and we have here our thinking inside of a box approach that Microsoft is performing here for the vision task. And you might say, hey, this is great, yeah? So, but you know that for each and every box, we have to take into consideration the exact location tokens. Because if a sentence that spans three boxes, one, two, three, you know, this is maybe one sentence, we have to be able to identify that those three boxes follow each other, that the sentence in the boxes is one sentence. So we have to compute a lot of position tokens now with each individual page. And we hope that no sentence starts in one page and continues on the other page because then, yeah, we lose this sentence. So welcome to the latest development, Cosmos 2.5, September 20, 2023 by Microsoft. The latest in technology. And we will now evaluate if it is worth that we will use this particular vision transformer. I told you it outperforms everything, beautiful. But it is, if you have a look now at the transformer architecture, identical to Nougat on the architecture side. Because they say Cosmos 2.5 combines a vision transformer based vision encoder with an encoder and a transformer based language model. So as a decoder, and this is exactly where we have our vision transformer as an encoder. And as a decoder, we have here BART. In an extreme case, this is simply an LLM. Please notice that this is BART and not the latest by Google, BART. This here, please have a look at Nougat if you do not know what's the difference between BART and BART. Okay, now you see that here, if you combine now Cosmos with Nougat here, that 
Astonishingly, I have to commit, Nougat by Meta or Facebook Research did something clever. They did not use the traditional vision transformer, but they went here with a shifting windows transformer. I explained this in my last video, which is a really good idea. Cosmos 2.5 does not specify that they use the Swin vision transformer as an encoder. So I have my doubts that Cosmos can outperform Nougat. So let's further investigate this. Yeah, of course, as I told you, always look at the training data set. The training data set defines 70, 80% of everything you're going to look at in an AI system. So for spatially aware text blocks, as I showed you, you have one line of, of text and you put a box around this. This is what we're talking about. Cosmos 2.5, what pages do they use? They have here a specific data set with 27 million pages. And then research, we have our archive paper and we have close to 21 million archive pages where we have the PDF and identical to Nougat, the LaTeX source file, as I showed you in my video about Nougat. In addition to this, we have with Cosmos now PowerPoint slides. Yes, we are in Microsoft world. So we take 6.2 million pages of PowerPoint as a training ground. And we are Microsoft, so we crawl the web for diverse uh, PDF file. And we just download from the web 155 million pages. And I'm sure that everybody respected every legal boundary condition. And then you take some web screenshot. So you scrap some web pages and render this as a screenshot. And you take just about 100 million pages. You are Microsoft. What does it count if you have to use 1,000 GPUs or 10,000 GPUs? This is not of concern to you. So you see, you have 100 million pages, 150 million pages, 21 million pages in science. But you see, compared to Nougat, that only and exclusively focused on archive mathematical notation from scientific publication, Cosmos, Microsoft focus on PowerPoint slide, some general PDF, and some general web pages, some screenshot, and in a significant am amount. So if you look here at the weights, you see 21 million pages compared to these two combined 250 million pages. You see Microsoft trained here for general PowerPoint slide, general PDF. So interesting that they mm, argue that they outperform Nougat since Nougat is focused solemnly here on a mathematical notation. Something is wrong. So, and of course, let's have a look at this, how they do this. As I told you, if you have archive papers in PDF or PowerPoint slide, or you download for the internet some general PDF, 100, 150 million PDFs, how do you get here the information out, the text out of a PDF? And I showed you, because in archive, in a PDF, all the mathematical formula are not extracted. But what about the pure words, the pure text version? How do they do this? Well, Microsoft says, hey, we go to a commercial software. This is called PyMu PDF. This is here commercially developed by here uh, software incorporated. We pay for the commercial license and we just extract from the PDF files the text and the layout information. And please notice that they focus here on the text. Of course, PowerPoint slide, you need the text, but not the mathematical formula, just the text and the layout information. And if you think about PDFs, the layout, you want to have the main headline. Then you want to have the normal headline. Then you want to have extracted maybe the three subheadlines. And then maybe you have a table or you have a list of elements. So here we understand that Cosmos 2.5 the text and the layout. Nougat goes for the mathematical formulas. Full stop. And they outperform Nougat? Interesting. Yeah. 
So this is exactly what I showed you. You have here a PDF and this is here what Cosmos 2.5 encodes every single line or here every single word or every single number or every single header. Well, yes, you get it. Spatially aware text blocks are here with a commercial parser by a company. They now decode the PDF format here on the left side to a pure text format. They can further use as an input to an AI summarization task. If you want to see how the output is structured here, Cosmos 2.5, easy. This is it. Look, this is the headline. New York City Department of Education School Year Calendar 2023 to 2024. And here you have the coordinate of the bounding boxes. And then you have the first sentence. And if you look here, this is exactly here the headline. And the red bounding boxes now we have here, if you want, a positional encoding of each element. And this is now a text element that has been parsed by this commercial software. You might say, okay, what is specific? What is special about this? And nothing. But, but, hello, there's a new component in Cosmos 2.5. And now we understand why we have here this point 0.5. Because the development of Nougat, I think Microsoft followed and understand, hey, there's something happening. So what they did, they have now a second element. And the second element is now a structured, and please notice again the structure, of a text output in a markdown format. Format, format, my goodness. And you say, interesting, so exactly like in Nougat by Meta, they have now text to Markdown. Because Markdown can have all the specific special characters, the structure of the document, and even mathematical formulas. If you agree to a certain format, you can write in a Markdown file. So what they did, they need, again, for this task of Markdown, they need a data set, a training data set. So they collect about 3 million readme files from some GitHub. Then, of course, Microsoft, so you go here to Word, and you have about 1 million pages of Word files crawled from the web, or maybe from somebody else. Then you have, again, here, archive. Now you go with the PDF and the LaTeX code. And as I showed you in Nougat, it is very easy to go from LaTeX here over HTML5 to a Markdown version, and, and plus they get some 6 million HTML files from somewhere, and they convert it in a Markdown format. So this is how they create now their training data set for the 0.5 part, where we have a structured text output in Markdown format. This is new. So again, summarize. Cosmos 2.5 has the old blue one, the spatially aware text blocks, where every line will get an own block, where every word will become an own block. Beautiful. And this is new here, the structured text output that captures now the style, yes, also the font, and the structure, headline, the list, or whatever, into a markdown format. So this is what we have now. And this markdown format is crucial here because the markdown format is exactly the point 0.5. So what is it? This different, or differential, no, different structural elements, <laughs> we have tables, lists, headlines, footer, sidelines, whatever you can imagine you have in a Word document or in a PowerPoint or I don't use Word, so please, Think about whatever you use in your Word documents. In Markdown, you can have specific tokens. For example, the table cells, the specific cells in a table can be denoted here by vertical board and list elements that you have in your document. You can have here a star or here a minus or a plus sign in front of each bullet or however you do the typographic emphasis. If you have some bold or some italics, you define here the markdown format structure and you can integrate here the document structure in the learning. Beautiful. Now, of course, you noticed that the markdown text 
does not require bounding boxes. Of course not. We have here the information of the structure of the text and the structure of the text. So why would we require bounding boxes? Now you might say, hey, why we not move to Cosmos 3 with only the structure text output? Only Microsoft knows. So they are moving away from their bounding boxes and now they are moving like meta with Nougat here now to the structure text output for style and structure of the document. And you have all the special characters and all the formatting indicators in your Markdown language, which is beautiful. So again, Cosmos 2.5 is now, if you have here an image or a PDF file, able to do the Cosmos 2.2, <laughs> and this is here the 0.5. So if you use the commercial parser here from this company, you get here this box format or you have a different training data set where you have to the PDF. You do not have to extract here the text information with a parser, but as I showed you with archive, you have with the PDF the LaTeX file that has all the markdown information in the LaTeX notation. You can use this now as a training data set for a mockup prompt. So this is the classical two. Cosmos and this is here the 0.5 Cosmos. So you see this is here the new development component which makes sense because imagine you have 100,000 or 20 million pages where you box every word. Great. Okay. Yeah, I showed you the markup prompt gives us here the possibility to find the headline. This is great if you use your text summarization by an artificial intelligence. So you have the headline, this is the text. Then you have here three bullet points. So you have three list element, one, two, three. Then you have here a table. For example, this here is the header of the table and you are amazed and you have here column one. And this is, I don't know, cell 23 of the table. So in the markup, what is the difference? As you can see now, you have here not with the positional tokens around the boxes, the information where the elements live on a page, but you have here a markdown element. This tells you exactly what element is what and where it is positioned. Great. So Cosmos 2.5 moves from the box format here to the markdown format. Here we have a summary. So we follow here officially the notation by Microsoft Cosmos 2.5 excels in two distinct yet cooperative transcription tasks, which is to say, okay, we kill off the spatially aware text blocks and we move over to the Markdown language. But the Markdown is on style and structure of the document of the page. And remember, I'm still interested in why it outperforms Nougat. And Nougat was not on style. Nougat was not on structure. Nougat was on mathematical formulas, on physical formulas, gravitational waves and structures like this. So, beautiful. This is the summary, Cosmos 2.5. This was Nougat. Nougat did not care if it's a headline, a subheadline, a bullet point. Nougat cares about the mathematical formula, the mathematical expression. So let's compare this now. So we know that Nougat by Meta with the Swin transformer is based on the donut architecture of the encoder and decoder where we have a vision encoder. And of course I have the video about Blip2 where we use the Qformer. I will have in my next videos here the next development to align here the visual feature we can extract here from an image or a video and we align this with an LLM. And now we have a new member of the family, Cosmos 2.5. Isn't this amazing? And now if you look exactly here at the publication by Microsoft, you find out that for the text recognition task, Cosmos 2.5 outperforms Google, but Google document optical character recognition which is, I don't know, 100 years old, 
by an extreme performance margin by 0.3%. So, you know, if you would just ask ChatGPT to summarize here the Microsoft research publication, where they state that Cosmos 2.5 outperforms Google, and this is extracted here by an AI, and this is here in the main points of the document, you have to read the document to understand that it outperforms a Google non-AI system. The Google Sys document system from the Stone Age with OCR, and it creates a training data set. It creates the pre-training of the AI model. Microsoft did all the fine tuning for their specific task. And in the end, after they tuned it for a thousand of hours, a thousand or ten of thousand of GPU, the outperformance is 0.3%, which is a Microsoft statement. Now, if you go for other terms, you have 2% and 1.3%. So, hey, did this really pays off here in the text recognition task of Cosmos 2.5 compared to the old Google document OCR. But you remember, there was the second task, this markdown task. And Microsoft said, hey, our method significantly outperforms Nougat. And they have in their official research documentation, and I had to read it twice to really get to the point, because I'm not that intelligent. You know this. And I look at this, and they took here this small <laughs> Nougat model and the base Nougat model, and they compared it to their beautiful Cosmos 2.5. And I said, hey, what is this? What exactly does this mean? And as you can see, the figures, I mean, if AI would extract this, it would say, hey, look, 80 to 90%, this is so much better. Here, 58 to 95, wow, this really outperformed. But you know what? If you're interested in science, you say, okay, so what is the evaluation data set? And what is the evaluation benchmark in detail? So here we are, and this is now the original Microsoft text from the scientific publication. And we are here in the image to markdown generation, so in the point 0.5 here. And look, they come up with, they adopt a two-fold evaluation scheme. An edit distance and a tree edit distance. And the main element is the lexical accuracy, so that the words that are in the PDF are recognized correctly in the now AI output system and the preservation of the original structural elements of this PDF. So what we go for is the words recognition and word translation and the structure elements. And you might say, this is interesting. I see that, that uh, Cosmos 2.5 has here in the markdown here all the structural information, the main headline, the subheadline, the list elements, the cell elements of a table. But you know what? If you look here, significantly outperforms Nougat. Nougat is focused on the mathematical notation, the mathematical formulas. And now you tend to understand what's happening. And here, of course, here is the other benchmark, and it is very scientific, and it looks really interesting. And you look at this, and they say, hey, we, we as Microsoft, we create three data sets to evaluate here our specific image to markdown task that we have tailored for Cosmos 2.5. And we include here a document-level markdown generation, a readme markdown generation, and a table markdown generation. Uh, so we have an evaluation methodology that Cosmos choose. Okay, then Cosmos, Microsoft chooses to create three specific data set for this specific task to evaluate here Cosmos 2.5 mark markdown task. And they create here now three different kind of data set a document level, 
Now, in a document, in a general document, as I showed you, they have 150 million pages of some some average text, where they have what 100 million pages of some screenshots. It could be theoretically in this general document text, there's maybe only one line of a mathematical formula, or, or even no mathematical formula at all. So if you compare here the document level markdown performance to Nougat, where Nougat has been trained on the mathematical notation of formulas, and you have here a document set that maybe has no mathematical notation, it is a surprise that this here goes to Microsoft. Now, of course, read me. Now, you know, if you go GitHub and you have to read me instruction, the explanation, what this GitHub repo is all about. Now, let me ask you, how many multi-differential or integral equation you find normally in the readme file of a GitHub? How many physical diffusion equation, partial differential equation you find here written out in full mathematical notation in a readme file and <laughs> you guessed it how many integrals you put normally in a table that you create so i think this is a very interesting benchmark evaluation structure and a chosen data set by Microsoft for the Microsoft algorithm to evaluate against a different system that has been trained on mathematical formulas. This is the scientific publication by Microsoft. So I would say congratulations, Microsoft. You designed an evaluation test set. Yeah and two evaluation parameters that are really optimized for your specific Cosmos 2.5 image to markdown document layout structure. And when you run the evaluation task to a mathematically optimized recognition AI, you outperform it. And I have to tell you, you know, I have to tell you, I mean, think about this from a different perspective. You have two cars. Both are cars. Absolutely correct. Absolutely correct. Yeah? And now you say, hey, this Ford T model from 1910 outperforms this car. And it is correct because this is maybe the task for you if you're interested you can find an evaluation data set and an evaluation task where this car outperforms this car. Yes, this is a correct statement. Think about it. You have two people seating here in the first row of the Ford T model, and maybe you can squeeze in three people here in the second row, in the second bench here. So this is a five-seater, and this is only a two-seater. So this Ford T model outperforms here more than 100% this car. This is a partially true statement. Therefore, congratulations, Microsoft. You did it again. Thank you for watching. Thank you for listening. Maybe you got this little tiny little bit of sarcastic information if you look here at evaluation data set in detail. But this would be the topic for another video. So I say thanks. I hope it was informative. I hope you decide if you want to use now here the specific code elements available for Microsoft that you see where Microsoft is in its technology evolution. And if you decide to go here with the latest technology for Microsoft, it would be great to see you in my next video.